I don't have any expectation to be honest. <laughs> just, just sharing because uh, I've received those questions. I, I can easily answer those. So hopefully they may be helpful to people listening in. Yeah. Though I'm excited to listen in to the one that's going to be shared by, by Field about collaboration with partners. Yeah. Then I sign up for it. So I'm, yeah. I want to listen in to those. A lot of people signing up for it. I think a lot of people are interested in that yeah. session. Yeah. Are you interested in that, that session that, that session because it's FMB or you're interested on the topic itself? What what was the one that caught your attention? Partners collaboration because I felt that this is something that as our company, Ballery Enterprise, we are lacking in that we are always a for a lack of a better word, a one man show. So we want to do all the marketing ourselves, all, all the outreach to the consumer, to the customers ourselves. But there is that very important factor of working with other partners together as a, as a power yeah. partners. Mm -hmm. That really is something that we are trying to explore recently. So yeah, I that's think that's a very useful one. In collaboration, because you guys are tapping into different markets, right? Because you have your own audience and then that other person would have another audience mm -hmm. so you can capture their audience into yours. Yeah, so that's where the power comes actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Wait. Oh, we have Rabani from everybody? Yes. Okay, then we can start in five minutes. So maybe I will just uh, let you, Ika, to just, yeah. just to sort of remind them how the format is. And okay. Then we'll just go straight into it um, in right. five more minutes. Okay, so first, um, <laughs> hi Rabani, it's my first time. Sorry, I'm waving upwards because I'm looking at you guys upwards. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm not looking at the screen. Hi Rabani. Okay. First time meeting you. Um, yes. So basically, um, for everybody's uh, now, uh, just information on how it's going to work. So I'll just introduce everybody, um, uh, and then, but instead of me like introducing more in detail about what you guys do, I'm going to like bring it to you guys, and then after that, um, after the brief introduction, we'll go into Ted and CL's um, stories, la how they uh, basically survived COVID through aggressive marketing, because that's the theme, kind. And then, yes. and then after that, um, after having a, a, about 20 minutes of moderating between Ted and CL, then I'll bring you in, or if you want to yeah, speak can. up like any time, like you feel like you have something to add on, feel free. Um, yep. If you want to highlight the MSMEs first, and then we'll give a chance for the mentors to give some feedback on whether they're doing well or what else they could have done, much um, just other suggestions and maybe something that would be useful for listeners listening in that. And then sure. we go into Q and A and yeah, hopefully we only have four registered. Um, no worries. Yeah. But then after that hopefully we have Q and A where we can just continue the discussion mm -hmm. in terms of what other especially in this case marketing efforts like MSMEs could have done during COVID-19, especially within the Brunei context. Oh, also okay. Being recorded also. Oh. So we're going to upload this on our website as okay. a resource for people. Okay. 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 So yeah. So we'll be on Dare's website as a resource. Okay. And then okay. I'll, I'll end the session with maybe just sharing any, just like recapping what we've talked about and then we'll be done inshallah in one hour. So, yeah. Okay. That's great. So, uh, I have to crack. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Oh, uh, Ika. Ika. Nice to meet you, Ika. Yeah. Okay. So, how many people are participating in this uh, uh, channel, this platform today? Mm -hmm. Africa. Africa. Uh, and in this, in this panelist, there's well, yes. five of us. The other okay. Is our IT just helping out with the session in case right, right. any hiccups. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be live in two minutes. Um, yeah. So hopefully this one will be a good uh, informative session for those who are watching. And then that can be like a good resource once we put it out there. And I'll try to make the flow as easy as possible. This right. is the first time doing like a webinar, so if things get like awkward, drop bunny, feel free to <laughs> speak. <Sure. laughs> You're the one with the experience. Um, but yeah, hopefully everything will be going well. When you mean live, it's not going on Facebook live, right? 
Well, we actually have the idea, but maybe not for this session. Maybe yeah. the next coming okay. session. I'm thinking. Does that yeah. make you nervous? It makes me nervous because of that. Uh, today, I just like literally dress down. I can't be bothered with my dress code a bit. But so I apologize in advance on that. Uh, you look fine. You look fine. Uh, uh, I had a long day yesterday and and and, dress, and dress uh, down. <laughs> yeah. What's the dress? Yeah, down? but actually, but you, but most of the time you have seen me. I am quite dressed down for for work majority of the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I can I I can I I not not that I can't be bothered to dress up. It's just that I I feel that dressing up on this day and age needs to be chill out a bit. You know, especially being a a digital nomad where you work anywhere. So work anywhere, dress down anywhere, yeah. But dress, you know, sometimes certain platforms, the dressing uh, first impression still counts. Okay, we're gonna start. Okay, we're gonna start now. So I think we'll just start straight away. Okay. So. All right. So we're starting. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good afternoon. So welcome to everyone. So today is the third session of the International MSME Day webinar sessions. So today we have ourselves some companies that will be talking about how to basically market your company during a crisis. So how Bruneian companies handle marketing during COVID-19 in the past three months. So without further ado, my name is Ika Mercedes and I am the moderator for today and from there. And we have two MSMEs here representing us for this topic. First, we have Chai Lee, and we're going to call her CL, the founder and chief learning officer of Maven's Hive. Maybe Chai Lee can say a few things like, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, so you already introduced, I'm the founder and chief learning officer of Maven's Hive. So this um, is basically a learning platform for people to connect, learn and share. All right, thank you, CL. So I'll be referring to you as that throughout this um, session, yeah. And then next we have the manager of Valerie Enterprise, Ted G. Hi, Ted. Hey, everyone. I'm Ted. I'm the manager of everything to do in the company of Valerie Enterprise. Basically, that means I do everything in the company. <laughs> we are a healthcare, natural cosmetic, organic care, personal care line company. So really excited to have this session with everyone. So looking forward to it. All right. Hi. And then next we have our mentor representing us um, from BMEN. We have Rab, uh, Rabbani Mubarak. And he is basically an expert in marketing. Maybe a few words to introduce yourself, Rabbani. Hi, my name is Rabbani, but everyone call me Bunny for short. Uh, I'm pretty new to Brunei, so that I've been here uh, as of today, it has been one year, three, months, three days since I've been in Brunei. So uh, I previously worked with Progressive. Now I run my own digital agency based in Brunei for the region. Uh, and I'm here to share with you what Digital Brunei will look like in the future. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice to get to know you. So hopefully during this session, everybody gets to learn something about how to tackle on marketing with Bunny's. Um, expertise as well as the experiences that will be shared by CL and Ted. So maybe we'll just go straight into it. Let's talk about it. Um, maybe I go to CL first. Mm -hmm. um, here I noticed that your business has won the best co-working space in Brunei in 2019. So congratulations for winning that in the ASEAN Rice Bowl Startup Awards. And yay! Mm -hmm. So based on that, um, I found out that you've hosted quite a number of workshops, about 22 business workshops, and you've empowered a total of more, almost 200 participants so far, yeah? Mm -hmm. So based on that, um, basically, we know that you are a social learning hub, so that's a physical space. How did you end up going into that kind of business in the first place? Okay, uh, it all started with my personal background. I have been a lecturer for the past six years at Polytechnic Brunei. So uh, I quit my job earlier this year and full-time focus on Maven Thai. So um, I feel like there's a need to have a lifelong learning center where anyone can basically join. You don't need to have any prerequisite, no registration. Um, you don't even need an O-level you know, res uh, results or something. So I feel like there's a need for people to come to something that's more accessible and that's my, my whole mission of setting up this learning hub. 
Okay. That, that sounds great. So being a space that was initially very physical, that's supposed to be very accessible, I'm sure that the whole COVID-19 situation mm. has become some sort of a hiccup for your company because you require people to actually go to your premise. Yes. So um, how was it? Because what did you end up doing to tackle that situation when that happened? So it all started somewhere in March when things starts to get more serious in Brunei. And I have to cancel almost like about 10 of my events. That's like towards the, the second two weeks, uh, second weeks, uh, second half of March. So we quickly move online. That's a, a very obvious move for us to do things online. And it started to get more... Uh, familiarity as well as even the schools are starting moving into uh, using Zooms or Skype kind of uh, free tools lah online. So I think going digital is definitely the number one things that I have done, uh, which uh, suits my business nature very well. So the second thing that I also trying to do is um, getting myself into collaboration with people. So we it, we also join. I also join like programs from Progressive or Brunei Mentors Network. That's where I met Bunny. So he helped me a lot as well in terms of um, giving comments on how I can improve further in social media. So we can't just stop anything, even though it's it's happening. Everyone struggles, but we try to keep ourselves more active and put our name outside there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, along the way, I also help uh, improve a lot on my content. Okay. Uh, we we try to move on like Bunny's uh, advice on us. Uh, put more people there. Your people right. business. Right, right. So, so I introduce something like learn and share with CL. That kind of branding lah. Just putting our face out there to show that this is a really a human business, and continue to give more uh, something more useful, some useful advice, uh, tips that we can use. We have like I I also work on COVID related uh, workshops with Demon. So, mm free sharing sessions out like that. So I think really to keep also positive also like, at times like that. Yeah. yeah, don't don't stop anything. We continue to collaborate and really it's a sharing of our resources also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so sharing the network and people from Beeman knows me and people right. from me knows Beeman as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like through the crisis, it has been quite a busy change uh, going online, especially speaking of having an online presence. Um, Ted, um, I know that your business um, in terms of Bella Nature, since you sell like physical um, cosmetics products, uh, you are available in several locations around Brunei, right? Like um, you're in the Brunei and Made Initiative. I see your products there and then I can find your products maybe at A1 uh, and several other like hotels and whatnot. So in terms of having an online presence, you guys also have a website, right? Um, how has that been um, in terms of since COVID started? Like, when did you launch the website? Was it a result of the crisis or did the website already exist from the beginning? The website was started quite a few years ago. It was not because of the COVID. Because we, we went into this business, we know that we have that the vision of wanting to hit other countries as well, to, to sell to other countries. And in order to do that, we need a platform for people from Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, as far as UK, we have customers from UK as well, going through our list of products on our website. And that is from the get-go, the vision that we have. So that's why we developed the website. It started out as a very crude website. Thereafter, we refine it over the years to what it is today. Definitely, the COVID pandemic allowed us to reflect back on this the need, the, the, the even more importance of a need of a website, especially for physical products. Now, especially now, we cannot, we cannot have tourists coming in. In fact, we were being hit quite a lot by the lack of tourist business. Because rightfully, you said that we have presence in, in hotels, in airports, and those dried up all of a sudden overnight. And we lost a huge, huge chunk of our business. So then we have to tap on to more foreign markets in terms of using our website and that's a blessing in disguise that we did not appreciate until recently. Thank God we have that. So you mentioned that you managed to tap to foreign market because does that mean you've been more aggressively promoting through your website and or are you doing something similar to CL, um, releasing content on your social media 
more often and toward, geared more towards like these people who could benefit from the product. In terms of the releasing content, we are not doing so much of those like educational kind of materials, but we do release in terms of, let's say for example, one of our range of products is, a, is the natural deodorant range. It's a very popular range because people are more health conscious nowadays. So we will have to release things that will preach people basically on the merits of using natural deodorant, for example, about the, the danger of chemicals, things like that. Those are the, in essence, those are the contents that we put out. And we use that as like a, like a polar effect to pull people in and lead them to our website. Because at the end of the day, social media, let's say IG, Facebook, has a very limited real estate space. You only have that much space to, to say things. So we have to move on to our website as much as possible, move them to our website because on the web, our website, there's no noise. Everything is our content. Then the people who go to our website can just scroll through, read through our things that we have links inside that bring them to read testimonials, read even more of our product range and look at our story, look at our certification, things like that. And that's where I think it's crucial to have that website. We use social media to pull people in and we the website. That's what our main end is. Okay, so that's two different strategies, yeah? So from CL, you wanted to release content that's more active, that people can relate to and maybe share. And it's very people-oriented, whereas for TED, you're using social media to pull people into your website. So um, that's very interesting. You spoke about certification, and this is um, one thing I'm curious about for either of you. Um, but for now, TED first. Uh, how was it, because it, since you have a certification, is, I, I'm assuming it's ISO like standards or some sort of GMP, right? Um, if I'm not wrong, because you can share more about that. Um, did it change after you get certified, like your website has more traffic or like you can share more about that? Sure. First thing I must also thank, bring this up and thank there for having this consultancy program. It's, it's something that we've been wanting to do as well. We, we did our own homework, we did our own research on how to perform ISO certification, GMP certification. And we did our lab work prior to that, but we do not have anyone to to hold the ropes to say, to let us, guide us on that journey. So then along came there with this consultancy program and what a blessing these guys. So we signed on to it and we get a mentor, like a personal coach who really took us on under his reins and actually showed us the ropes one by one. And it makes the whole journey so much easier. And once we got it, uh, the thing that, the benefit that we got out of it is people starts to associate us with quality. We did not get more traffic because the certification itself is not like a, a, a huge pool, but it becomes a very easy sell to people, especially on export market. It's one of the things that we are trying to do is doing export markets, especially to Singapore and Malaysia. Those are, those are our immediate neighbors that we are trying to target. And because when, you've, when new people comes into your, your, your world, the first thing they'll question is, is your product is the quality good? They'll start to question that and that becomes a, a very hugely debated topic. I'll say it's good, but you say it's not, you, you are this debatable. But with the ISO certification, I put it up there, there's no even debating it. It's certified by a ISO certified company that it's quality. So straight away, I take that out of the equation. Next, we can talk about distribution, talk about marketing, things like that already. It helps a lot in that sense, especially Malaysia. If, because we are in the cosmetic and, and pharmaceutical line, we went into Malaysia market, we explored that market prior to ISO. We were not able to get in because we do not have that GMP certification. The Malaysian government, the Malaysian Ministry of Health required that as a prerequisite. So now we have that, we were able to get in and find a distributor and we got one because we have the GMP certification. So now it's a matter of working aggressively with that Malaysian distributor to try and make it bigger in Malaysia. So it helps a lot in that sense. Okay, so it just... Um, it sounds like everything just kind of fell into place just before like COVID, so it had no relation really, but it just adds value to what you're offering. And then you're making use of like really pulling your customers into your website and then having that certification is just like an additional bonus to get people to believe in your products and purchase more of your products. On the other hand, um, how, for CL, like how was it before and after COVID? Like, why not? Can we can we have like a quick sharing, like from being a physical space to an online 
um, sharing session. Um, how was that change like for you? So the, the biggest difference would be we have no more physical touch. We can't really see someone. So that, that's the only that personal touch like, is missing. So mm -hmm. other than that, I feel like it's quite similar. Uh, but one of the things is uh, reducing costs, especially that when I have trainers from Singapore or Malaysia, things can be done online now. And people, more, it's okay, like people actually accept it already doing mm -hmm. so. So it, it saves a lot of costs in terms of bringing people in. Because just before COVID, I had them flying in. And the travel cost is already one, one big chunk of the cost uh, that they have to face here. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest difference. Lah. And mm. doing online, most of the comments would be the trainers would love to see the participants face to face. Uh, yeah. Feels like um, you can understand people more with their body language or thought. Because doing online, mm. most people would love to just off, off audio, yeah. off video most of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the trainer. The trainer missed that out last. So I think that sets the biggest difference so far. Mm. So would you say um, online learning is something that you've planned for a long time? Mm -hmm. Because you said you had to make that shift because or else you wouldn't get much business. So you had to offer online learning. But would you say it's something that you had planned for a long time or is just a response to the pandemic at the time? It's something that I have thought of years ago. But at that moment in time, I believe it's not, uh, even if I do release it, uh, it may not be accepted. But because of this challenge coming in, and it becomes a, a, a thing that we all have to accept. So mm. it's in fact helping me to accelerate further into digital learning. Okay. All right. Um, since um, now we go into the topic about digitalization, um, for either of you, you could um, maybe uh, let us know. Since you have focused more on having that online presence, does that um, equate to how many new followers or new customers you get? Was there any increase in customer acquisition for either of you, maybe? Um, who would like to share? Ted? Sure. Mm, that's a very, it's a very qualitative kind of question because on quantitative side, it's very hard to gauge for us. Again, when we bring the, the customers onto our, on, on social media, we bring them to the website, they can read more. They can either choose to buy from our website or they go offline to buy from the different shops. And we noticed during this current period where we were really, really aggressive in terms of online marketing, we do a digital marketing advertising, the sales in terms of the local sales improve as well. I'm not sure, is it because more people are staying in Brunei to shop? But I doubt that's the case. I, I think it's more a, a relation of more marketing and then they come to the website and then they choose to go buy from our offline shelves as well. But our online presence, our online website, the sales increase as well. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, we noticed that the, the online sales were not as high as what it was now. And last month, actually, we did a, a promotion on our website. So we invite people in, they get a discount, then they get free shipping and they get free gifts. It was quite an aggressive promotion that we did. We have never done something so aggressive before. And our sales, we broke all prior record by a huge margin because of that. So I guess because of this COVID-19 pandemic, people are more accustomed to going online to shop for things, to, to procure anything, training, things like that. So that, that ease of using online starts to get into people's mentality. That's why I think the online presence is really, really crucial. But plus it opens up a whole, whole network of things that you can yep. do online as well. Can I can I add something to this? Yeah, I think I think we like with what CL and Ted is doing. It's really opening up the market. Like the reason why I tap into digital uh, marketing is because, uh, and I'm here in Brunei is because I I, I want to push businesses like Ted, business like CL that that Brunei might not be the only market. You know, a lot of conversation we, uh, I think, as entrepreneurs that challenge here, uh, uh, SMEs and micro entrepreneurs, they 
they always have this mentality of saying uh, it's just the Brunei market. But then with them going online, I think they, they see that there is penetration that their businesses can cater to, to the Borneo region, to the Singapore market, to the Malaysian market. And a uh, great example is, is Ted himself. But then obviously, how what's the matrix of understanding of how, whether it was coming from social media, those are really, really uh, available sets of st- statistics that can be available. So he needs to implement marketing technology into his platform to actually track and then see the ROI and the returns from, from it itself. So uh, I think that is what CL is also su- uh, seeing that uh, obviously for her it's more the people interaction. That's why she needs to do more collaboration and basically even though the business, whether it's medical, pharmaceutical and education, uh, it's all about the communication between what channel are you using. Social media might be a channel or, uh, for Ted, but if, if he wants to push more, obviously, uh, great. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, to hear that you actually got certification for GMC, yes, there is another content of uh, information that obviously justify uh, his products, his services that are available on his platform to direct more audience to his website and create a channel or transactions. And that being said, you know, with with uh, the travel ban, uh, I, I would say Bruneians are not poor. Bruneians have money to spend. <laughs> okay, say example in Korea itself. Korea, when they were on, uh, they never had a lockdown, but uh, you know they had so much money to spend that they, they that Chanel had a long queue of Koreans wanting to buy luxury goods. Imagine that because of that, the excess of money, people now have money to spend, but they do not know what to spend on. But the concern of it is like, what is the next day of my money is? But the, with, with that being said, people want to spend money, but they don't have a platform to, sell, uh, to spend the money. So that what? They start spending on uh, medical products, you know, all the uh, antibacterial products. As much as it skyrocket uh, sky up with the pricing of a, a, a spray or bottle or that all, people are still going to pay for it. Not because they need to protect themselves, but because they have the money to spend. But people are just so afraid to 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 find the right platform and uh, having a like GMC certification uh, for that it encourages people to actually spend because of you know there is a level of trust. So even with CL, with the kind of people that she collaborating with, you know, uh, people from real estate agent, people coming from trainers, they want to be. Uh, they would sign up for her workshop. Reason why is because the kind of collaboration she's doing and the speakers that are coming to it and the kind of content of credibility that the people are doing the communication about. So both of them are doing the right thing at this moment to, to keep it and keep on going because if you stop your marketing or content building now, at least 38% of your business who do not do any marketing or form of communication we have a harder time when post-COVID happens. That means people will forget your brand, people forget your product. So this is the best time to really continue having that conversation, having that content to, to market your product and get consumers still spending on it. Yeah, so good job, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Bunny. Um, for those who have just joined the webinar right now, we're talking about like aggressive marketing and, and right now we're touching on digital marketing during COVID-19. So um, just to basically wrap up what Bunny just shared, um, we have to take the opportunity to really capture um, and retain these customers that you've gotten during the COVID-19. Because um, for me, I do agree. Usually like I have free time, I would save money to travel, but now because of the travel ban, I have extra money. I don't know what to do with it. I end up on websites, you end up window shopping and you put things in the cart, then you end up buying. It's just, so it seems to be like the psychology of customers at this point. And I think Ted's doing like a really good job as well. Um, Cause I do notice like on my Instagram, I see sponsored posts with testimonials of um, your products and that does draw me into your products. Um, but Ted, you also mentioned that um, earlier that you also did additional promotions. Like um, when you mentioned promotion, is it something along the lines by this you get something? Or do you think that was an additional incentive to like, because I know that's an incentive to increase sales, but do you think that has something to do with the increased sales other than the fact that you're drawing people into your website? Okay, the promotion that we did was a a discount plus free shipping plus free gifts if you buy 
over a certain amount. And we find that it re works really, really well. On our back end of our shopping cart, we have this, we analyze on our Bruneian consumer pattern. And we notice that every time they buy something, they buy a certain amount. Mm. So to put that carrot in front of them, we said, you buy a certain amount more than the normal, you get a free gift plus free shipping. So that's what we did. That's what we did to encourage the, the more spending on the website. And people do that. Even though they are a couple of dollars short, they'll find something to buy, let's say a natural lip balm or something small just to make up for that additional amount. Okay. But it works for us because it, it boosts up that value purchase. Yeah, because that extra like, item is so valuable even with just like an additional like purchase. Um, what does that say um, regarding like customer behavior to you as someone who actually sells physical products? Because for example, for CL, um, they just have to be able to adapt to a digital like online learning environment. But for someone like you, what do you think that says about Brunei's customer behavior? Because I don't think customer behavior is something that MSMEs talk about. And then maybe this could be something valuable to other people who are watching the webinar now. Sure. This brings up to the point of tying in with the website as well, where when people go to physical shops, let's say they go to Supercell and buy our products, we are not able to stand there and sell them that thing. So they pick up just one thing, let's say eczema cream, and they off they go. That's, a, that's it. But on our website, there are so many things we can do. Let's say they, on, on this, this particular page, they look at eczema cream. Then on the sidebar, we can push other things, 50% off this certain essential oil roll-ons that we're trying to promote. And after they buy, they can shop and shop and shop other things as well because it's on our website. People are window shopping now, like what you're doing. So they're window shopping, they're looking at other things, some interesting things they can add it on. And the wonderful thing on our website is we can do bundles. We cannot do it on, at Supercell, for example, we can't bundle it because the, the, the logistic of handling that behind is, is horrendous. We can't do that. On our website, we are free to do whatever we want. So we can bundle things. Let's say a normal things, you bundle three together, it's $100. And because you bundle them together, we can sell it to you at say 95, 90, 97 or, or $89. It becomes a very good value for the consumer. But for us as well, it benefits us because now consumers are buying more versus then they are just picking up just one cream off supermarket shelves. So that's the wonder of having on a, a e-commerce platform. You are able to do these sort of things. So essentially you're just an additional thing to your marketing. You're adding more value by offering things that you would generally not be able to offer in like a physical retail shop, or in this case on the shelves, so off the shelf. Um, for CL, you have quite a range of consumers or instant customers, I would say. They are just people who decides to join your classes. Um, how would you say, because as I mentioned earlier, they would just need to adapt to online learning. Um, were they able to adapt as quickly as you were in terms of, because you had to um, basically make that shift quickly. Did the customers that sign up for your classes make the change as quickly as you did, you did, you did. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. did they adapt to it as quickly, yeah. I would say yes, uh, or probably the first few things that I have done is the, the free sharing sessions to help businesses on COVID. So that sort of like start to bring people in and uh, eventually I started to release small, smaller packages on paid sessions. And until today, I even uh, started a new model called Pay As You Wish. So uh, uh, explore different types of topics. Like I work with the like mentor circle. We talk about property. We talk about financial planning. And this month uh, in July, I'll be talking about mental health series. So I, I believe it's more like catering to the current needs and trying new things. Uh, trying to explore new ways of doing things. Uh, even though I can't really do a promotion, but I believe a, a new business model like this is attracting uh, attracting attention as well. Yeah. So you're keeping up with the trends essentially, like. Mm. Um, with COVID and you mentioned like uh, mental health because I did notice on your social media feed that you do once in a while release content that are like how are you feeling today those kind of things so it, as you mentioned that you are in a very people-centric um, business so you have to really get close to people and that's one of the ways um, would you say um, that's how you connect with your customers so that you can retain them? Uh, for most of the content, what I'm doing is more to, to connect it with, first thing is I would like to find out what the customers really need now, especially at times like this. 
So we we found that mental health is one of the big topic that we need more we need more content lah, more information about it. So for example, July. In fact, this Saturday we have one on anxiety and panic attack, and that's something that uh it is one of the the quite popular posts that we have so far and received quite a number of registration. So I I think and the content that we're building it's along that. That bundle, we're trying to to shape this mental health month and we give more information that's relevant. So uh, that's yeah. So far, that's what we are doing to try to cater to our consumers, lah. And yeah. that that idea actually comes from the consumer itself. We ask survey, we have feedback form. What you would like to see next? Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of how you take the feedback from the customers. Um, so basically, your content is. It's, is it safe for me to say that your content is basically just a way for you to gauge interest, like um, for what you can do next? And then mm. it's good that you have customers that are willing to share feedback with you, because um, sometimes customers don't usually share what they think of like a business. And then, um, how would you say that you've managed to like gain their confidence in sharing this information with you? Um. Well, actually, there's one feedback that I can share with you. That's one of my loyal customer, and what he actually mentioned it's more to me, his personal opinion of myself, and he feels that I sincerely want to help community. I think that sincerity is something that people can can feel. Mm. So, because I'm trying to make education accessible, meaning it's also affordable. So, uh, bringing the content that people need at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like this is something that is quite consistent also. So I've been yeah. doing it for for the past since last year January. Yeah, so it's years. something that's consistent. And I involve a lot on youth empowerment as well. Most of my yeah. customers are less than thirty five. They are youth. Mm. So I think I think that's probably why people slowly lah that that takes time to build that kind of yeah. trust. Yeah. Especially yeah. myself, I'm also educator. I also run my own workshops. Right. Yeah. Right. So with that lah, we have to put on our like personal branding, putting ourselves out there, and mm-hmm. we sim- we symbolize our own businesses as well. Yeah, so I think that's how, especially in education business. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I know I talked about it before, like customer acquisition. But do you think that because your content in your social media, when you um, basically try to share this information to get interest, does that help? In any way to release fall uh, to increase your followers because for mm-hmm. your type of business you require that higher like um, market acquisition like online because the number of followers may reflect how many customers actually attended classes. Uh, I would say actually increase quite fast in the past few months. I can see the like we have like few hundred in followers increase in the past one to two months, and there are many new customers. Not not the the all all yeah. the all faces, and then I have like many more new faces coming in, and I have new sales because I have a partner in Singapore. So we actually start to receive Singapore customers joining the the same workshop as Brunayan at the same yeah. time. So I think that's all made possible because of this digital learning space. Mm. Yeah. I think that really reflects like the current situation. How even though we are currently going through a pandemic that forces everybody to basically just stay put where they are, it actually opens up Brunei specifically to the rest of the world. Like Ted mentioned that he had an increase in um, purchases from foreign markets. And then for you, now you have this collaboration with a Singaporean. Um, there's definitely a silver lining despite what's happening to everyone. I think for Bruneian companies, um, it's something that they should take advantage of. There's definitely an opportunity, especially in a day and age where we're trying to go digital and try to embrace e-commerce um, for, yes. yeah, yeah. So yeah. anything you'd like to add, Bunny? Yeah, I think, you know, this is a, a digitally, it's a positive kind of note. Um, you know, uh, I was in this, uh, Asia Inc. Forum where they were talking about Brunei is always a test market and uh, I mean me being the the Wild Wild West cowboy I tend to ask questions a lot uh, it, it, uh, and a lot of people that I meet in Brunei they always say that Brunei is always a test market which which 
which on a positive note, I don't think so Brunei should always think that they are a test market. There is always opportunity. And I think because of the high employment rate in Brunei, uh, people do want to learn and upgrade themselves and have uh, skill gaps that, that, that the market really needs. And uh, CL is offering that services. And so that with her partnership with Singapore, it allows people wanting to sign up on her workshops, giving her better offerings for the customers and allowing them to network. Because of that, her workshop is not only about, oh, you listen to my speaker only. It's about the people in her community networking with one another, doing collaboration. And that is what CL is doing. Uh, as much as going online, uh, having this Zoom call right now is a connectivity for us to network ourselves. And it's always building that relationship, whether it's coming from there, whether it's coming with that, whether it's coming of CL, you know, and individually, other than working for the organization, it's about the individual that you're connecting with. So this gives them an opportunity to, to actually penetrate a market that they never thought about. So this, uh, as business people, uh, I mean, for me personally, I started my, my own business this year, in fact, when COVID just started and then everybody started, who would even thought of starting a business during COVID? But, you know, to me, digitally, this is promising. And I find that the business that where we are going digitally is very promising. And uh, post-COVID, it is a promising market for, for the younger generation. And it's not about always putting the, the pocket from left to right. It's coming up with the offerings and uh, be, uh, giving it to a wider audience. And that will allow... Uh, us to actually move forward and put Brunei on the map itself. And what we are trying to do are really positioning Brunei that, hey, you are underestimating us. Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, we are Bruneians here, you know, we, we, we have business, we have our offerings. Uh, don't forget us, you know, we are part of the, the ASEAN community. Yeah. Yeah. So that is very promising for, for, for each of every one of us, uh, whether we are going e-commerce. I mean, it is a new sales channel that people have to remember that it's a different kind of sales channel. And what we've chat, uh, with Ted is doing, you know, uh, he's doing packaging. So that is like certain products that he's not able to sell. He can actually, uh, it's how the website is being responsive. So that it is about having the analytical skills uh, to analyze what product is not moving and maybe can market it more with to complement the other purchases that people are doing. And what CL is doing is like, okay, let's partner out with a Singapore uh, company. Then of that, because you have Singapore clients, I have Brunei clients, let's then work together. Because of that, a lot of Singaporeans are coming to Brunei to be a consultant. So that being said, there is always business opportunity where Bruneians can be consultants for, uh, for Singapore in the long run. So there is a lot of opportunities that they are actually pushing for. So that don't under, uh, underestimate the, the power of technology and where digital Brunei is building towards into. Yeah. So thank you. That definitely wraps up like the whole um, session right there um, in terms of what opportunities Brunei MSMEs have um, in terms of the kind of generation we are in where we're very heavily um, involved with our technology. So it would be a shame for us to miss out and in terms of using that digital um, environment, uh, that ecosystem for local business. That's right. Yeah. So um, we're moving on into the question and answer session. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, so far, we don't have any questions. But um, I do want to continue the conversation a little bit. Um, let's see. Because I've asked as much as I can. Um, but. Yep. Because um, earlier we talked about the content of um, the types, identifying what kind of contents that may um, attract a potential customer like CL. What she did was that she just kind of saw what was trending and then see engage with customers. Whereas Ted just said like testimonials. What else do you think they could have done in terms of trying to attract more customers using their strategies? Me. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, from what it seems from uh, Ted, for example, I think, you know, with, with, with more marketing that, uh, uh, with more people entering the Malaysian market that he is having more customers, I guess what uh, he wants to consider about pushing more of his products in that market 
maybe within Borneo first and then East Malaysia, then a bit tapping into uh, the Malaysia market. And that's where you snowball to Thailand and Singapore. But then I think it's where, what what kind of platforms is he using? Okay, um, I'm going through uh, uh, his website right now. Surprisingly, a lot of people going to your website to desktop compared to mobile. Okay, 85% of people are going to your, your percentage going to your, to your desktop and uh, while 14% are penetrating to your desktop, uh, sorry, to the mobile. But that is, for me, it would be a concern. The reason why is because 64% of South, uh, in Asia, people are actually uh, mark, uh, accessing uh, the website to the mobile phone. So maybe if, if, if he wants to uh, create a better audience base in reaching out, he want to actually make the website uh, easily responsive on the mobile. And that's something that he can explore in the long run uh, you know, moving forward. And that allows people to actually shop on their phone and do a direct transaction moving forward. That's just a suggestion for you, Ted. But you know, this is something that I'm promising that you can look into and reaching out to the audience base, especially in Asia, where we are mobile-centric majority of the time. And that is a big number. And you are, uh, you are actually tapping into a market that, that a lot of people are actually getting source of information on the mobile, on the tablet. And tablet might have a lower penetration, but don't forget that, you know, uh, sooner or later, no one's going to use a desktop. People are just on the go on their tablet and then they're doing work. Um, we are younger generations. Uh, like for me, I don't work in the office for your time. You can see me at Tree Light Cafe. You can see me at Verve. You can see me working at Starbucks. I don't sit around to do my work in a daily office. There needs to be a mixed channel where you are sitting down uh, so that people are actually really on the computer and really engaging the content and media that is potentially developing in the future. And that's where we as a digital marketer would want to work with, with brands like this to actually help them penetrate the, the, the audience base that they are reaching up to. So uh, mobile is a, a direction that, that you want to push for media and content so that it's easier for people to read moving forward. And that is something that, that I think uh, software developers, uh, you know, creating jobs opportunities for, for the digital gap capacity that is huge in this Brunei market. And that's where you need to find the right people to work with you to close out the gap to help your business forward. Yeah. And CL, I think you, you might have some connections with, with the Singapore market. Who knows, you know? Get them to actually uh, connect uh, with most Bunayans to actually tighten up the gap. And, 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 and that is where the direction is, uh, honestly, digitally. And the offerings that we need to get is, is positioning Brunei, as, as, especially with the, two, uh, with the new master plan, digital master plan that Brunei has offered. It sounds promising for us, especially going to e-commerce, online e- e-learning that we're doing. So that these platforms are going to be the focus for the next five years. And I hopefully if they and even the government agency, AITI, have more support in us tapping into this technology uh, and programs or framework that can tighten up so that we, we small businesses can tap into to, to increase our productivity and innovation of engaging for our audience base. And what I would, I wouldn't like to call it audience. I always like to call it the community, your community. This would be actually a very promising way for, for, for us young entrepreneurs, but not only young entrepreneurs, but for, for, the, for the unemployment market that is huge in Brunei. Right. Thank you for the tips. Um, is Ted, is going mobile um, something that you're planning on working on or is that... Um, yeah, do you feel like, because right now, as Bunny mentioned, that the desktop has more um, visit, you have more visitors coming from the desktop. Do you think making your website more responsive on mobile phones is something that you're working towards? Actually, our website is designed with to be mobile responsive. So I'm not sure, maybe Rabi, you were checking it, something that doesn't reflect that, but it is mobile responsive. And mm-hmm. I agree on the mobile site because when we check our Google Analytics on our website, more than half of people coming online and doing the purchase actually comes from mobile. And I totally agree that point. Going forward, it's a mobile world. So we have to do position ourselves in that direction. I totally agree that statement. Yep. So um, 
I guess we're going to close the session soon. Um, but I just want to get like some last words, maybe because Bunny shared a lot earlier on today. How about from Ted? Do you have any tips for any businesses who are just starting out um, in terms of selling products, especially um, going into e-commerce, setting up their own website? Do you have any tips or advice that you'd like to share with them so that they can like succeed in their own businesses as well? In terms of e-commerce side, I do not have much tips because the, the setting up itself is actually quite easy. There are plenty of companies in Brunei that can help or you can do it yourself on free platforms such as WordPress and you install in something called WooCommerce and it's free. You have to have your own hosting, but it, that is as cheap as it can get. But to go really one step further, there are plenty of companies in Brunei to help that. So I won't touch on that. But one thing I want to touch on, I think it will fly by a lot of people who did not listen carefully is what Chai Lee said about Singapore partners. I think that's a very important thing. For us, when we started to sell in Singapore, we find it it's a lot harder to get the consumer trust. In Brunei, unlike this, we have already established a base in Brunei for many years. We have been on many platforms, people have seen it. So the moment we put up marketing pieces or content pieces, Bruneian consumer absorb it and they just, they trust us, they just buy or don't buy, that's it. But for Singapore and Malaysia, what we found is the, the level of skepticism is very, very high. We have to do so much more to win their trust. It is very, very expensive. And this is where I would like to encourage everyone, do not give up, have that tenacity to keep going because once you've won that trust, in fact, one of our, a couple of our Singapore and Malaysian customers, they are lifelong customers of us. They buy once, that trust has been established. They keep buying and buying and buying. But it costs a lot initially to get that consumer, to, sorry, to get that customer. This is where I think Chai Lee's, where he, she mentioned a Singapore partner is really, really, really crucial. And this is where we started to look for Singapore and KL distributor to help us as well. So I think that part is very, very crucial for businesses trying to go outside of Brunei to find a partner. Definitely, um, because it's at least a stepping stone for you to get them to gauge the market over there, whichever market you're targeting to. So for like local MSMEs, um, it's just a matter of really working hard and then not counting like the cost so much because you know, like OPEX can usually be a hindrance, like, oh, this costs too much, so I don't want to do something. But if you have a goal set and then you know what, how you're going to plan things, I think it really works towards like how your business will grow. So that's really good advice. Thank you, Ted. And how about CL? Do you have any advice when it comes to marketing, especially in a very people-centric kind of business? Oh, uh, well, actually, I would, I would totally agree with what Ted has said. It's collaboration and partnership. So the, how I get to know my Singapore and Malaysia partner is that we actually met in Brunei through, uh, through events, through training, workshops. So uh, for me personally, I'm a person that's quite active. Lah. So there's any program I go apply and I try to join as much as I can. Uh, I believe that's one thing. You have to put yourself really outside, very active to all these sorts of events or programs. So I just finished one from Progressive. And even Beeman, I joined the mentoring circles. I believe that gives us more opportunity to network with people. And you never know. You never know if that person can be your future partner. So put yourself out there first and that's, that's how I get all my partners and they trust me also because we have that initial engagement even though we don't even think of that that could be our future. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I believe that's the first thing and putting that uh, with Beeman, I have partners. Even in the morning, I talk to my progressive, uh, there's, a, there's a coaching group. So we're going to have another project coming up. So you see opportunities just come from something but you have to do that something first. Right. So I definitely agree with you on that. I'm definitely putting yourself out there and basically just stepping out of your comfort zone because you never know who you're going to meet, what outcome is going to come out of meeting just a random stranger any time of day and just sharing ideas and then seeing how it goes from there. So um, thank you so much to Bani for all the insightful um, uh, ideas that you shared with Ted and CL and hopefully it's something that the people who are watching the webinar today can apply in their businesses and to Ted and CL for making your time to do this with us today. And for those who are wondering, um, earlier they did mention a couple of programs that Jay has to offer. So CL talked about VMEN a lot and how that was like a good, very good networking opportunity to really 
find collaborators. So if you're interested to find out more about BN, BMEN, you can go to our website. And then for those who are interested in getting certified with standards, um, Ted explained earlier perfectly how the outcome and benefits of that was. You can find out with our standards consultancy program, which is opening up a batch for registration. So if you think you can apply for that, you can check out our social media and our website for more information. So that was the end of today's session and today's webinar for the International MSME Day, session three. So if you're interested to find out more, you can always just drop by on our social media and website. And we can see you again tomorrow, hopefully, for another session for International MSME Day. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming and joining us today. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. You want a photo? <laughs> you want the one screenshot? Okay. One, two, three. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Rafika. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Bunny. Yeah. Thanks, Ted. Okay, catch up with you guys soon. Definitely meet some, somewhere in our networking session. Uh, I guess uh, they will organize more. So it'd be good to meet you guys one day face to face. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.